Hello everyone, welcome to a little video about a big plane in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. This is the Antonov 225, the largest plane in the world as far as carrying capacity and uh, length, though not in wingspan because of the Hughes H4, the Hercules or the Spruce Goose. Uh, but otherwise, the largest plane in the world and of course was used to carry Buran. This is not the final version of it. I have a I guess you could say improved version, one that looks the part a little bit better, but it has some problems. In general, there are a lot of problems with this because a firm aerospace, while good at aerodynamics in general, isn't very good about the airfoil. And airfoil, the shape of the airfoil is very important, but regardless of how you change the thickness of a B9 procedural wing, the aerodynamics of the wing does not change and uh, that causes huge problems with a very heavy craft. With a small craft like the T-38, it's not a big deal because it has a thin airfoil anyway. And actually, it gets more lift than it probably should. Uh, but with a thick airfoil, a plane with a thick airfoil, uh, it causes a lot of problems as far as the center of lift. And if you try and simulate the thicker airfoil, all you're gonna end up getting is more drag. And so you're better off just going with a thin airfoil and, but that doesn't get as much lift as it ought to. Uh, well, anyway, uh, so that's that's a problem. And I'm going to sort of demonstrate the problem between the two versions of the AN-225 I have. This one has a relatively thin airfoil. It's th This uh, top main wing is actually as thick as this can get. And I've added a single other wing here to add some thickness and also to move the center of lift forward. But as you can see, there's still a fairly big gap between the center of mass and center of lift. The dry mass of this AN-225 is currently 284 tons, and it's supposed to be 285. In order to do that, I actually had to add uh, ballast, and it's in various locations on this top section. And so if we see here, we see some lead ballast here, uh, lead ballast is there. Uh, there's a little bit of lead ballast here. Of course, also kerosene as well. Most of the kerosene is in the wing, though it's not fully loaded right now um, because, um, well, it's full capacity for for a fuel would not allow it to carry a very heavy load anyway. Right now, it's carrying nearly 200 tons of fuel, so that's quite a lot. And we might want to reduce that to see and get a better indication of its performance. The maximum uh, liftoff weight of the AN-225 is 640 tons. This cannot do that. And um, again, I think it's because of the wing problem, though, you know, there are leading edge slats and stuff like that. Oh, by the way, if you're troubled by the vertical stabilizer, uh, at the other version I have, the next version I'll show you that I tried to improve upon this with, it has a larger one. It, it is supposed to be bigger than this. So, oh, and uh, during my stream when I was putting this together, somebody had suggested that this is not wide enough. That is not the case. Uh, I've checked. The width of the AN-225 interior is 6.4 meters, and the exterior width is only a little bit... If I can uh, demonstrate by this procedural tank I wanted to show. Um, the width of the exterior is just 6.6, .6, so it's a very thin hull. But I can show you that it is, in fact, 6.4 meters inside here. Uh, at its maximum, it's supposed to be 6.4 meters. Uh, the height is actually supposed to be 4 meters or so. Um, so, as you can see, the 6.4 meter tank fits pretty much exactly inside the hull of this and so it is the correct diameter. Okay, so that's set. And also the wing uh, wingspan. Uh, I think they're a touch smaller. Uh, they're pretty darn close, so I think it's like 88, uh, 88 length and uh, 89 width, so less than a meter off right now. Okay, so, well, let's take it outside and see how it works. Okay, here we are on the shuttle runway, and you can see, as far as rotating, it really doesn't have a problem. The wheels are in the right place. Let's put the brakes on. 
and the uh, fly-by-wire module active, throttle up, and you can see we're almost full of fuel. We're just not quite there. We're actually carrying, let's say, two-thirds of our full load. And ignition. In order to carry, like, Buran on its back or something like that, it would have to have much less fuel. But it's got significant range right now. It's got six hours of fuel at uh, full thrust. But at altitude, it'll be much more efficient, so it probably has a much longer time in flight than is, it is showing right now. I mean, if we take a look at what FAR thinks, it doesn't think anything right now. Okay, waiting for the engines to rev up to their full thrust. It looks like they're fine. So let's release the brakes and actually uh, dip the flaps. So you have these at, as flaps and only as flaps. They are not being used to control pitch at all. And that's because the location of the center of uh, mass right here uh, makes it completely futile anyway. The location of the flaps is right at the center of mass on average, so their ability to affect the the pitch moment is not gonna be a thing. Uh, okay, now we're off. Just before the end of the runway, we managed to get off. So it can fly. <laughs> Always good to know. Now, here's an interesting thing. When I retract the landing gear, you'll notice that the velocity... Well, I mean, we're going up, so it's not a big deal. But in, with the next model, the block 2 if you will, uh, there will be a pronounced effect with the landing gear retraction that I don't understand. So, hmm, yeah, so we'll wait on that, but there doesn't seem to be that much of a pronounced effect here. Uh, that was just because we were going up. Anyway, it's flying. Let's uh, slowly, carefully retract the flaps after gaining some speed though. Let's gain some speed. I've retracted, I've uh, gone to flap setting 1, it was at flap setting 2 on uh, takeoff, and flap setting 0. Okay, so now we're, we're carrying basically 190 tons of fuel right now, and if we just carried 100 tons of fuel we could carry a shuttle on the back relatively easily. The shuttle has drag but also has lift because of its own wings. And, uh, I mean, Buran particularly, though, actually, we don't have a good Buran, so maybe the MAX spacecraft I'm more thinking of when I say shuttle. I think the MAX spacecraft would be more interesting. So anyway, it is in a good flight configuration. Landing will be a breeze as long as we can slow down. I'm not going to actually belabor this one. I need to talk to you about the problem I'm having with the what was supposed to be the more advanced model. And it will be apparent why that's more advanced. And I'll talk about why I think it's been having some problems. Okay, so this is the more advanced model. And you might notice an additional wing piece here to make the wing thicker. And the goal was to add more lift. And it does by the way, shift the center of lift apparently further forward. You can see the center of lift and center of mass are very close to each other now. Not only that, we don't have any ballast in the tail anymore. Instead of having the ballast in the tail to increase the... And I'm, I'm showing you this because this is the maximum kerosene load. If you take a look at the, the lead ballast, there's none there. And if the, uh, this is the maximum kerosene load, you can see it's just carrying kerosene all the way through the top part there. And uh, the lead ballast is actually here and here, these two tanks, instead of all the way in the tail. We need lead ballast to make sure that the mass is correct. So the point is we didn't need to use the lead ballast to shift the center of mass further back, which is good. And it's very close there now. So that's nice. Uh, but first of all, our starting mass is much lighter right now, and I, can, I can't really get it off the ground very easily even as it is right now. And so we're only carrying 130 tons, a little bit less than 130 tons compared to the 190 tons with the Type 1. And beyond just the extra wing spar here, we also have these 
little pylons that are used to uh, uh, for the extension of the flaps. They go with the flaps, by the way. It'll be it's a nifty little thing. Uh, this part is a procedural wing, and this is actually a control surface. And so the control surface is uh, matching the flap settings of the flaps here, and so they'll bend down with the flaps as they should. So uh, if you wanted to know how to do that, it's just uh, this is a procedural wing and this is another control surface. Uh, the problem, I think, is that the additional thickness of the wing doesn't help at all with uh, fair mirror space. And on the other hand, having it there increases the drag. And so our, our n n newly thickened wing produces a lot of drag and no new lift. I mean, I, I'm not entirely sure how it works, but this is a supposition. And we're going to test this supposition by launching it. And again, we're lighter right now. Our center of mass and center of lift are configured better. Uh, the vertical stabilizers are a little bit bigger uh, to match the real thing. Well, I mean, uh, we've got all the good things happening with this, so if things go wrong, I'll, I'll leave you to guess also what might be going wrong. Incidentally, the engines are almost exactly the same, even though they're not technically the engines used on the AN-225. The stats are virtually identical for the CF650Es and the engines on the AN-225. I'm not going to look at it right, but the mass is uh, like within 0.02 tons and we're talking about four ton engine and uh, the thrust is practically the same. So anyway, let's launch it and see what happens. Okay, as you can see, it's still bouncy and itching to go. You can actually, uh, it's so ready to rotate that it can lift its wheels off the ground there. I'm not entirely sure that's the best thing. But anyway, as long as its tail is not hitting right now, it's fine. Actually, the tail seems to be particularly resilient to hitting the ground, which is nice. Overall, our our uh, kerosene load uh, is reduced because of the change in... Well, I mean, it's apparently reduced not only in the change in the tanks, but also because of this additional uh, spar having potential capacity. I, I forget exactly. But anyway, we're obviously carrying less overall. So, fly by wire on and ignition. And let's uh, extend the flaps right now. Two notches. The overall flap settings are the same as before. You can see how these work. So that's a nifty thing. I was I was glad to uh, get that looking right. And I think, I mean, obviously, the secondary flaps here don't extend down. I would like for that to work, but at least these sort of happen. That's a nice effect. I'll work on the slats, the leading edge slats later, but uh, unfortunately, I, I don't think that's our problem. I, I really don't. So, anyway, here we go. Double check the thrust is fine. 196 kilonewtons right now. Again, this is lighter right now. That's really what it looks like. It's tough sometimes with such a large aircraft to figure out exactly where things are because of the angles. Now we seem to get off the ground at around 100 meters per second with the last one, so I'll just start pulling up at that point. Here we go. I mean, it's definitely faster than it ought to have to lift off at. And there's probably some... There's actually, honestly, some ground effect going on with this too. Potentially. But you can see, we're, we're, not, we're not really uh, clearing the ground very easily. And it's not accelerating very easily either, and that this is why I say the wings are producing, uh, the additional wing pieces are producing drag, but not more lift. Okay, um, I want to sort of keep it relatively level. I'm gonna retract the gear now and see what happens. Look, 
Look how fast the speed is going down when I retract the landing gear. And of course this is going to lead to a crash. But why... Uh, of course, uh, our attitude had not changed that much. So... Okay. All right. Okay, let, let's get some distance. So yeah, that is weird as all heck. Why would the retraction of the landing gear, same landing gear by the way, the landing gear has not changed, and we'll, we'll go to the SPH and take a look at the landing gear action group to make sure nothing else is action group to the landing gear. But why would the retraction of the landing gear cause such a huge dip in velocity, more than 20 meters per second? And we, we, our, our attitude had not changed that much. If anything, the retraction of the landing gear should decrease the drag and improve the situation. Anyway, let's go to the SPH. Okay, let's take a look. I didn't change the gear action group at all, and as you can see, it's only the medium landing gear that are present. The placement of the gear has changed somewhat, but that doesn't explain a huge dip in velocity when they are retracted. So, if you guys have experienced this somehow, mind you, it's the same landing gear that we had on the other one, which didn't produce any significant drop in velocity. And it was only on working with this one that I was looking for that with the other one. And I didn't see that same change in velocity. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is at least put these nifty little... Uh, I don't even know what they're called, really. Uh, the, the flap extender thingies. Um, onto the other version, the Type 1, the first edition. And of course, increase the size of the vertical stabilizer to be a little bit more correct. Um, but omit the extra wing spar that uh, was supposed to thicken the wing and make it a little bit more proper. Uh, it's obviously just causing drag at this point. But what that does, uh, I mean, obviously in that case, our center of mass and center of lift won't be this close together. Um, oh, ignore the, the after fuel burn center of mass that's produced by RCS build aid. Uh, RCS build aid is assuming that we'll consume the lead ballast as well, which are in these two tanks. Uh, we don't consume the lead ballast. And on average, the fuel is centered at the center of mass. So as it drains, it's not going to change the center of mass at all. Um, yeah, so this is my conundrum. But yeah, I think uh, the first thing I'll do is put these little guys onto the Type 1 version and change the vertical stabilizer. And at least that version flies. So we have a chance to do the max spacecraft. And obviously, I haven't made this look quite like the AN-225. I think what I need to do is just go in and change the stock textures, you know, all the gray stock textures that we have, and lighten them by a few shades so that they match the typical uh, whitish color of airliners and airplanes like this. And probably I need to uh, come up with the yellow and blue that uh, the AN-225s often sport definitely not NASA logo. So anyway, lots lots to do still. Um, but yeah, I'll get your thoughts and this is where I'm at on this one. And I'll give you updates on the other uh, planes I've been working on, like the T-38 shuttle. I've, I've worked on that and I've got some updates for that. And uh, other things where you guys have uh, made suggestions, I'll do updates on those planes as well. But anyway, this was what I was working on, and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.